Hey everybody, Skylar here. Today we're going to be looking at the Wise Lock. Uh, this is sort of a padlock, but it's really meant to secure chain links together. It was patented, uh, the filing was in the late 20s, and I believe the patent was approved in the early 30s. And it's uh, very clever. It was made by a man named Solomon Wise, uh, hence the name Wise Lock. And this is a telescoping pin lock, so a pin inside of a pin. Now, a lot of you might know this concept from multi-lock. Now, don't go thinking that the multi-lock uh, original patent was about pins inside of pins. I believe it was actually for reversible keys, something to that effect. The telescoping pin idea has been around for a very long time, and Solomon Wise actually has this three layers deep with a pin inside a pin inside of another pin. Um, and, you know... As per the patent, he could have extended this more dramatically, but the footprint-wise, this works out nicely. Now, Solomon's idea here was very clever and very well thought out on a lot of different levels. So, number one, just got to match my correct cues and my correct locks. The way that the lock opens is that this part, the body that the key interacts with, rotates away. So his thought was that for chain link, you needed a lock that was as strong as the chain that it was linking and wouldn't be subject to any different force than the chain was. So that if you pulled the chain dramatically, the lock should still hold just as tightly as another link in the chain. So having this only rotate away in a direction that uh, wasn't likely to be torqued by a chain being pulled or twisted or anything like that was one of his initial ideas. The key is reversible. We'll have a closer look at that. Um, and when you look nice and close at the face of the lock, you can see all of the telescopic tumblers, which we'll see in here as well. All right, let's go straight to the close-ups right now, and then we'll tell a little bit more about this and eventually pull it apart. So as I said, our key is symmetrical with a wise lock. And you can see the concentric circles inside there. And when we turn it away, you can actually very clearly see the driver pins, the stacked concentric driver pins on the opposite side. Now, I had had one of these locks for years, uh, this one in particular, but I never had a key for it, and while I sort of had a general concept of how it would operate, I didn't take the time to just look up the patent and understand how it worked. As I got more interested in history, I of course got more interest and found it's just a fascinating patent, and much more recently I was able to find a couple of very affordable other examples. And because I finally had a couple and they had keys with them, I took the dramatic step of destroying one so that I could pull it apart. Had to grind off the back plate here. In theory, I could get it back together, um, maybe thread this, put a screw on there, and I'd like to do that at some point. But for now, I have a bag of parts that we will dig into right now. So, we have here the internal components of the Wise Lock that I had previously disassembled. Try to get a slightly better light on those. All right, so this is our driver pin stack. Um, and what you'll notice is this is actually a massive mushroom pin. That gets slotted right in here. And then there's a very small tip of the interior pin. And that fits into this spring of these two stacked springs. So this guy here, let's try to thread that through. There we go, and then this exterior spring, and now we're able to apply spring pressure on each of the components. These guys all live right in here, like so. Only packed much tighter. And then on the key facing side, we have our key pin stack, which is a little more straightforward. Just like so. And those will live facing 
the key. So you can see your concentric circles there again. This bar fits through here. This is where it pivots from, and there's a small spring on the back of it. And that's all the uh, interior pieces. Pretty clever little lock. I'm going to toss this back in the bag. All right, just putting everything back away so that I don't lose track of it. Like I said, at some point I would like to do a proper demonstration lock with a screw on the back, but it's, it's really become one of my favorite locking concepts in my collection. Now that I have a couple of keys and I have the bag of parts and I've really been able to dig into the patent and understand how thoughtful Solomon Wise was at every step in the process, developing this lock for a really niche application and developing it very well, and the fact that it continued to be sold for quite a while after that patent was filed. It's just very cool. I like it a lot. All right, I hope that you've enjoyed it as well, and I will see you next week with a new lock.